Um, so uh, up this morning, good morning, everybody. For the agenda today, we have the um, the Hackfest planning. Um, uh, we had an email discuss a ballot, I should say, on the uh, amendment to the process for counting contributors. Um, so we'll review that, and then uh, we need to get each of the work group chairs to basically uh, provide Todd and team with uh, the list of contributors so that we can make that public. And if people want to contest that, they they, they may. Um, and then we have the uh, performance and scaling working group. Mark is going to review with us the, um, the proposed charter that the team has uh, come up with. And if we have quorum, we'll have a vote. Is there anything else people would like on the agenda today? Hearing nothing, I think we can start, so Todd. All right, I'll move through the first two topics pretty quickly. They're really just uh, FYIs. Um, so on the Hackfest planning side, no real update. We are still looking September 21st and 22nd uh, in Chicago, uh, just trying to finalize that spot. Um, we'll let you know as soon as that gets locked down. Uh, on the Europe side, uh, we do have a doodle poll out for that still. Um, it's looking like no strong preference between the five weeks that we laid out. Uh, so if you do have a preference, please be sure to get that in there uh, ASAP. Otherwise, we're going to move to um, lock in a, a location for that. It might be worthwhile, Todd, just to send out a reminder and a deadline for um, closing the poll. Yeah, people. I mean, I suspect that part of the problem with getting people to respond is everybody's out on holiday. So, yep. Um, yeah, we'll do. Thanks. All right. And then onward from there, uh, the TSC uh, election process for 2017. So let me just drop this link in. Um, so the only thing that got added uh, was there was an email vote last week, like Chris said, and that is really to include the uh, any of the work group contributors. So um, we put that verbiage in there just as an FYI. I will be reaching out to all of the work group leads over the next week or so uh, to collect any names from them. Uh, from people they believe to be contributors. So in the doc that I just dropped into the chat window, there is a link in there in the middle of it that shows the master list uh, of all the contributors, maintainers, and whatnot. Uh, so we will be continuing to update that until September 9th, uh, uh, sorry, August 9th at 5 p.m., which will be the cutoff. Uh, we will do a final review in the TSC call on August 10th in the morning. Uh, of that list and then kick off the nomination process and ultimately the election thereafter based on the timeline in this document. So over the coming weeks, please be sure to continue to check the list that we are constantly updating. If you do not see yourself on there and should be on there, please reach out to either me uh, or Dave Hughesby, who's covering in Tracy Kurt's absence. Um, any questions there? All right. Yeah, I think that's uh, pretty just, much. Just a comment. Yep. Um, are we going to go through this process every year, or is this uh, kind of baked into the meaning in, in terms of the WG contributors, or should we uh, start moving some of this, um, especially the material that we uh, produce onto the on to GitHub or some other venue that can be easily be captured. So Chris, I'll, I'll defer to you. Um, you know, from my view, um, every year we'll review an election timeline and the rough process and just call for any objections to ensure that the TSC is happy with the election process because that's really what the uh, overarching charter dictates. In this case, the uh, work group contributors, the addition of that was just approved for 2017. Uh, the TSC can choose to extend that indefinitely or keep this just for this year. That's really up to the TSC, um, not, not something that I or the Linux Foundation can dictate. Yeah, I thought, Todd, that we, uh, I mean, let me just go back to the thing. I thought that we had just amended the process. So uh, on an ongoing basis. Yeah. Okay. So potentially that was my misunderstanding then. 
Um, okay, so I will say that I had intended it to amend the process that we would use, um, which isn't actually written down anywhere, I guess. It's, um, I mean, aside from what's in the charter. Yep. Um, so maybe, Vip, and to your point, maybe the thing that we should do is to, doc to, to formally document this as part of the process. Um, yeah, because I agree. I don't think we should be going through this every year. That's um, <clears throat> so. I, I mean, Todd, I don't know if you want to just work with Brian and figure out what the right way of uh, essentially documenting the process should be. Okay. Uh, we can likely just add that to the wiki. Um, just yeah, I, mean, I, I think that would be fine if, if that's the answer. But I had actually, yeah, I mean, just to be clear, I had intended this to um, to sort of codify the process that we adopted last year, essentially. Okay. So thanks, Vipin, for bringing that up. So yeah, so um, if we could get the um, the chairs to each pull together a list of their um, active contributors, and if you have the emails, that's great. Uh, Todd, I, I gather that you have the ability to get emails from the accounts, or no? Yeah, so I have, um, in terms of the work group leads? Yes. Yeah, I have all their emails, so I'll be reaching out to them uh, to, to call for any work group. No, 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 I meant the... So when the work group leads each come up with their list, yep. If they don't have emails, I'm assuming you can chase them down, or we'll we'll do our best. Um, okay. Yeah. So th and that'll be part of reviewing the list over the coming weeks. So if we don't have someone's right. email, we'll we'll call for it. Right. But I I do think it's important for the work group chairs to each um, to to do that in the next week, so that there is time for people to. Um, uh, dispute if that's their intent. Um, so if we could have, you know, a, uh, uh, I don't want to call it a final list, but if we could have the list uh, essentially staged, if you will, for the final vote uh, by next week, then that gives people a week to uh, um, to contest it if that's their desire. So am I the one compiling the final list? Should you just have them all forward it to me? This is Dave. Um, that's up to Brian and Todd and <laughs> and you. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's not my, my not my call, Dave. Okay. Well, I was just wondering if Tracy was the person who had been. It was Tracy. Just... He was the well, one compiling the list. Yes. Yep. Yeah, well, then it's me. Oh, okay. <laughs> so yeah, well, Todd. Uh, I'm... I was going to say, as a working group chair, should I compile the list and send it to Dave and copy my working group mail list on it so people can get, get a heads up? Um, that seems reasonable to me, Mark, I think. Yeah. I'll, I can't I'll, think of um, to do that. I'll plan to post a master list of names, like first initial and last name. Um, without email addresses so that people can quickly check to see if they're in the list. Um, that way there we can at least... emails, but I mean, maybe actually that's a good point, Dave, maybe. <laughs> yeah, we should probably do it like universities do it, you know, like, do you see your student number here, <laughs> you know? So I can do first initials and last names, and if they see themselves on the list and they know not to pursue it further, yeah, that we should, that we have them. That, um, spreadsheet then, or... Um, yeah, where is it? I got, I got to find it. It's in, the, uh, it's in the link that Todd put in the chat. Okay. So if you go there, then it's the, the list is is in the middle of the process there someplace. Okay, cool. Thanks. <clears throat> but that's actually, yeah, you raise a good point there with the email addresses. So. Okay. Um, all right. I think we've dealt with that. So again, Vipin, thanks for bringing up the, the point on um, making this the um, the ongoing process until we change it again. Um, 
And then finally, Mark, you're up with the, uh, the proposed charter, which I see has been linked in the chat. Yes, I had put it in, and I think Todd may have just did it, done it as well. Excuse me. So, do you want me to run through this, or yeah, if you don't mind, you don't have to read it, um, but just sort of highlight, uh, you know, the deliverables and and uh, and so forth. I think. Sure. Okay. Um, so this is actually a slight rework of the original proposal back in April in DC that. Um, tries to incorporate the feedback we got there when we first formed the group. Um, so the key parts here are it, it's really a you know, cross-project forum um, for anyone in the distributed ledger technology community. Um, you know, we were pretty clear back in uh, April that we didn't want it limited to just hyperledger projects. Mm -hmm. And so to that end, you know, I've already been in touch with uh, people who run the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance performance and scale group, they're not quite started yet, but uh, they're happy to join. And uh, we'll start when they when they actually have some code they can work on on, on their end, I think. So, um, you know, initial work will be to document, uh, will be a document or more likely multiple documents which define, um, you know, we have to do a taxonomy of terms so we all are on the same footing for what the terminology means um for both performance and scalability um and then attribute to metrics of different of different distributed ledgers and, and technologies um eventually you know this this group is not charted according to this document you know the charter is not to go off and, and write a test suite the charter is to be a working group um that defines what a test suite might do and then there'll be, you know, at least one project spun up out of this to go off and actually write code to to do a test suite. So this is actually a very timely um, discussion because uh, I actually have in my inbox this morning <laughs> a request that's suggesting that there's um, at least one member getting ready to make a proposal uh, for that. But I also happen to know that there are others <clears throat> in the wings. Uh, people that have been playing around with, you know, benchmarking frameworks and so forth. Um, and I'm wondering if, uh, I'm wondering if there's been any discussion as to how that might be handled. Um, you know, should we have the work group sort of look at these and, you know, should we have one? Should we have multiples? Should we, you know, if there are multiples, should we try and figure out how we can get to one? Any thoughts on that? Um, personally, I think, you know, the, we've looked at a couple that people have sent out on the email list. Um, yeah. You know, there's a couple of universities that have done work and we've discussed, you know, the pros and cons of them. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things I think I'm trying to get the working group, you know, that we're working towards is going through and identifying three or four key use cases that have different characteristics. So financial versus asset management uh, or healthcare that all have, you know, different performance scalability, um, you know, attributes that they'll, they'll look for. Right. So we can make sure that the test suites, you know, and, and what we define will encompass everything. So, um, in one hand, you know, I think it's a little premature to to go with a test suite already if we haven't really defined what we want the test suite to do. But mm. on the other hand, I don't want to hold up implementation of a test suite. So I'm happy, you know, to to work with a project. Um, hopefully, the people are part of our performance and scale working group. What do other people think out there? Um, what kind of framework uh, will be used? Because you need a level playing field to compare different uh, different DLTs or the same DLT running different uh, applications or use cases. So there has to be, I mean, I, I know that Brian, for example, uh, last year, had uh, come up with a cloud platform that we could use uh, 
but uh, I think it was a little premature given that most of the DLTs were under development, heavy development at that time. But mm -hmm. now that more uh, things have matured, uh, I get the feeling that if we have a testnet stood up or something that is uh, quite uniform, then we could have these kind of tests run uh, in a way that, you know, that compares the different uh, protocols uh, in a objective way. Yeah, so um, um, that's an interesting point, Vipin. I think that um, uh, if, I, <clears throat> so I, I think that the, the issue of having a standing test net or whatever um, uh, to test against from a performance and scale perspective um, would uh, potentially yield, um, how do I say this, unfavorable results because I think, you know, if you're going to deploy something for Internet of Things that, you know, in the permission kind of a context, the way we are um, working towards here, um, it might be configured very differently than something that was just transferring assets from one bank to the next. You know, in one case, you're looking at a fire hose, and in the other case, you're looking at this, you know, constant barrage of uh, events from everywhere, right? So, um, I'm, I'm not sure that having a standing test environment is necessarily the right thing to be testing against. I think, again, I think that in many cases, it'll be something that, based on how it's deployed and configured, you know, may be different given the, the use case. I don't know if, if that's been discussed at all in the, in the work group, but. But then how are you going to publish metrics uh, for any of these things? Um, uh, yeah, I think it's kind of the. Go ahead, Dan, sorry. Dan, go ahead. Yeah, sorry. Um, can you hear me now? I can. Okay. Um, I think that the point of this work group is to resolve those kinds of questions like you were just raising and to the, the question of what should be the relationship between a project proposal in the performance space and what the charter of the work group is. I've, I think for this work group to be relevant and meaningful, I think it should have a close relationship between what kind of projects come through for performance and, and which don't. So yeah. I think that, the- That's kind of where I was, right. That's kind of what I was hinting at. <laughs> we've, we've already talked about that kind of relationship with the architecture working group and the platforms as just sort of a, the architecture working group is, is trying to look at big problems and how pieces fit together. And in that role, um, we're providing feedback to all of the platform developers um, uh, um, and, and vice versa. It feels like that should be the same kind of relationship here. Yeah. Yeah, but so that maybe should be called out in the scope of the work products that this group is meant to play that role specifically and in, in helping evaluate proposals we may get that Chris hinted at. So we tried to cover that in a vague sense in the last paragraph, the last sentence there in the work products group, that the uh, PSWG will also review and consult with other working groups and projects as appropriate. Would we want that a little more concrete? Ram, could you send uh, Mark a copy of the, or make sure Mark has a copy of the architecture group, just so you can see the wording that we used. Yeah, I'll do that. I'll just update probably the work group, uh, work product uh, section to explicitly um, say that uh, the, um, the work product should include uh, recommendations and uh, for 
both uh, uh, review and uh, testing and performance testing um, test suite recommendations for the projects in the group, something to that effect. Okay, I'll go off and look at that. Now, one of the things we've sort of danced around on this call that we, um, I made sure we discussed on our last Tuesday's call when the working group was reviewing this was governance. Um, you know, when you think of SPEC or TPC, you know, they're, they're governance standards body so that you can't publish a SPEC number without permission from SPEC, you know, and it has to get reviewed. Um, the people that were on the working group call felt that that's not the business we want to be in. And so I, you know, we'll throw that out here. We, you know, so we didn't put anything in the chatter about that. Um, you know, do people feel that's the right approach or do we want to somehow have a, you know, way to validate which implies a lot more work of anyone's use of the test suite to publish a number. Um, <clears throat> yeah, that uh, Brian is not on. I take it. I haven't heard from him. Yeah, um, that's probably some. <laughs> we we yeah. I, I I think that publishing actual numbers from Hyperledger is probably something that um, we want to avoid, um, either because we piss somebody off or because we get called on it and so forth. So um, I can certainly see, you know, publishing, here's the kinds of measures and how we expect them to be measured kind of a thing um, as being wholly appropriate, but actually publishing results um maybe not so much and um uh, it's probably something we want to talk about with brian and maybe the lf itself i don't know I, i'm todd i'm not aware of any other groups that, that do anything like that in the lf i mean i don't know all of them but yeah. Well, we we decided it wasn't the business we wanted to be in. Yeah, as I'm, a working I'm group. agreeing um, with you. So, <laughs> so let's not go look for trouble. Right. Right. Okay. I don't know if you want to put that in here anywhere. Um, yeah, I'll look at adding that to. Um, be clear that this is not not a governance body, right? And those numbers without any kind of attestations from uh, third party or uh, objective uh, bystander. Well, so have, uh, I will tell you what we did. So. I, one of the groups that I worked in in the past is the Web Services Interoperability Work Group. Now they weren't focused on performance and scalability and benchmarking, um, but it was, um, you know, the, the the organization was put in place to define a set of criteria um, that you could use to measure a given implementation or input or set of implementations of web services protocols that um, would indicate whether or not you were likely to get interoperability, right? If it passed the test suite, then you could say, yes, this is interoperable. Um, and um, <clears throat> vendors would try to do that. The thing that we did though, is we said, we're not going to say, you know, the, the organization, the web services interoperability organization was not going to say IBMs or Microsoft's or Oracle's or anybody else's web services, um, engine was or wasn't interoperable, but rather that they would put the test suite out there and say, um, you consumer can judge for yourself. And so, <clears throat> you know, by putting the thing out there and letting people 
run the tests themselves and draw their own conclusions um, uh, was was felt to be the way to avoid having to deal with the potential that uh, the organization itself would then be held liable for liable for libel, <laughs> right? Um, yeah. You know, for yeah. something. I mean, I I get I get that I I get yeah. the uh, feeling that you don't want to certify something. Uh, and most of these, uh, most software products, even the products that are written by people like Microsoft, do come with standard uh, disclaimers. Yeah. Uh, um, it's not like they will, you know, if I start trading with a with a with something that that I buy from a vendor, they are not liable if I start losing huge quantities of money using that software they'll you know they'll they'll stand by it to a certain degree but they they do never uh, certify it as uh, free of bugs or anything like that i mean so we don't you know we have to balance both views meaning you you obviously are not you're going to put a standard disclaimer there but at the same time you're you're not just going to say oh xyz has a protocol called XYZ and they claim it's the most performant based on this running of the test suite. I mean, so either there has to be a way to record this in a non-controversial uh, way, the, the results, maybe use a blockchain to capture that. I don't know, you know, the results. Which one? Itself. Well, anyone that can actually capture the results with a digital signature or something that says, yes, this did happen and this is what the results were, uh, instead of just relying on hearsay. Right, and, uh, and Hart makes a good point. Well, but you, I mean, you're Hart, saying yeah. that if you say that you, you know, as a consumer, you're supposed to you know, caveat emptor, I, I get that, but you know, then what is the purpose in us the producing all this tooling and, uh, you know, test suites and all, all this other stuff? Maybe it can throw out uh, some results as a, as a result of running it. That'll, that'll be uh, non repudiable uh, evidence. I, I don't know. I mean, these are some. Yeah, anyway, we can talk about it during the actual uh, uh, calls of the performance and working group. Right, and and Hart made a point, a, a good point here in the chat window that, um, you know, maybe to you know, there's a thing on the code that um, you know in the code license that says if you use this code to publish numbers, you have to put, you know, x amount of detail in about how you did it and what changes you made to the code, things like that. And that, you know, at that point becomes part of the software license, if you will. But I, I do think the way that you have it framed up now is good that the output of the work group leads to that project, not so much that we need to define what the extents of that project are in order to approve the work group. And Dan, I will accept yeah, your su suggestion there. <clears throat> I'm, I, was I just agree. Take a vote, vote. It's fine. It, you know, whatever we have today is fine. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'm just. So you accepted the change. Okay. Um, Todd, did we ever get to um, a quorum? No, unfortunately, we're still uh, too shy. Okay. Unless uh, Greg, Morali, or Sheehan have joined and not showing up in the chat window. Yeah, no, we're we're still okay. All right, well, I, so 
<clears throat> Mark, I think um, it might be worthwhile to, because I know you guys did go through and, you know, as a work group, um, you know, vote on this and, and review it. So it might be worthwhile to sort of take the feedback that we have here and do another pass and then we'll we'll take it maybe to uh, email when you guys think you're done. Um, or next week as the case may be. Um, again, I uh, summers are tough <laughs> to get quorum. Um, and uh, so we may have to resort to uh, the email trick. But uh, thanks for um, bringing this forward. And um, I guess unless there's uh, an, any other topics people want to bring up, I think we're um, we're good. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks everybody. I'll give you all thanks, Chris. twenty-five minutes back. Thanks, Chris. Thanks. Well, have a good day, Thank everyone. You. It's late in Canada. It's a good one.